Hello, hi, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to basically finish off looking at structs and object-oriented programming from the moment. And this is almost all of the background that I'm going to need before I start looking at the STL sort of stuff. So in the previous video, we were looking at a friend class and we were trying, sorry, not a friend, a person, and we were trying to give the person a reference to their friend so we'd know who their friend was. And at that point, we just used a string to represent the name of the friend. And what I wanna do is create the friend struct so that we can associate it to another, uh, sorry, the, ah, create the person struct so that we can associate it to a reference of another person. And I'm, first of all, I'm gonna show the wrong way to do this and explain where I can, why it's not so good. And then I'm going to look at a possible solution to this. So we'll start with a person and we'll give them a name. So far, so good. And we'll give them a friend, which will be a reference to a person. But now we have a problem. So the problem with storing a reference inside another object is that we don't necessarily know what the scope of this underlying object is. When we set this reference, yeah, see missing lifetime specifier. When we set this reference and then destroy the underlying object, we have what's called a dangling pointer, or in this case, a dangling reference, which is this struct person is referring to some object which may have been deleted. So the way we do this, the way we fix this up, is we specify that this person is going to exist for some sort of lifetime, and the reference, the object which is being referenced, is going to exist for at least the same lifetime. And then this complains and says, well, the reference is fine, but what about the, the person? Well, we'll scope them as well. So now we're specifying, we're specifying that these, um, this reference to this person, all of that exists for at least as long as the struct, which is referencing it, if that makes sense. And then Let's go ahead and print the, the name and everything. So we'll scope this to the person class. Okay, so, so far so good. But then when we say, okay, take our friend, get their name, and then this might complain and it's saying, okay, but we need lifetime specifications. So we say, okay, we're referring to a person in the same lifetime. And we also need to specify that the implementation, everything needs to be scoped in this way. So this is just making it nice and secure. So this is all well and good, but obviously, unless we are super strategic and only set the data once, it's not possible to always set this friend in the constructor. So let's give a function, or you might want to change it as well. Let's give a function which will set the friend. Should I just leave that for now? So just go self. We'll have other, which is again, a scoped reference. Okay, so logically this makes sense, but remember what this function is doing is it's mutating the state of this instance. If we hover over, it says, uh, yeah, we can't assign to that variable, we need to, where does it say, consider it changing it to a mutable self-reference. So we, we 
borrow a mutable reference to the self, and then we can set that. Okay, so let's go ahead and create some people. Okay, so what I really want to do is be able to give this some dummy data, something like this. Say, okay, we start off, we don't have a friend yet, and we'll set that later. However, this is a problem, mismatch type. So if we look here, it says we're expecting a reference to a person object, but we are actually getting an optional type. So none is... Ref um, none is sort of tied up in optional data. So what we can do is say, okay, let's modify this. This is a reference to a person, but not just that, it's an optional reference to a person. And what that means is that it could be an actual reference or it could just be none. And we can make things easy for ourselves by setting, specifying this um, input argument will be an optional reference. Okay, that's all good. Now, we can't get the name for this reference because it's an optional reference. So what we do is unwrap it, that forces it into an actual type, and then that's something that we can get the name from. So now this is fine. Okay, now we'll go ahead and create another instance. Okay, again, remember this is an example of something which doesn't work. So, so far so good, but then we might have problems when we say, okay, take Alice, make friends with so we want, to, we want to get the reference to Bob, but see that Bob is a real thing. So we need to turn this into an optional reference. And the way we do that is with the, the sum function. So that takes an actual thing and turns it into an optional thing. But now we've got a problem. We hover over here. Um, yeah, we cannot borrow Alice as mutable Okay, because remember this function make friends with is mutating the state of the underlying object and by default in Rust to keep things nice and safe, the default is immutable. So let's specify that Alice is a mutable instance of the struct and why not? We'll do the same thing with Bob. And now, see the relationship is getting a little more complicated because Alice has been set friends with Bob and Bob has been set friends with Alice. And now we have a problem. Okay, so if we hover over here, it says we can't borrow Bob as mutable because it has been borrowed as immutable, which is a little weird. So we'll just remember what's going on in the background. Rust is super, super secure. And in order to do that, certain rules need to be enforced. Bob has been, um, where are we? Yeah, Bob has been borrowed in this line here as an immutable reference. An immutable reference to Bob has been borrowed. And that's fine, we can make heaps of those because if we have an object and there's a whole bunch of references to it, but those references will not be able to modify it, that is very easy to keep track of. On the other hand, if we, in this line here, it's a little, little esoteric, I guess, but this function is actually borrowing a reference to Bob over here. And it's saying, I'm going to borrow a mutable reference in other words, this line here is mutating the state of Bob, and this line here is referencing Bob. And that's just a step too far for the that's a step too far for the um, the Rust environment, the Rust compiler, the the borrow checker, because 
If we have a whole bunch of references which are just read-only references, perfectly fine. But as we, if we add a mutable reference, that's bad <laughs> because it's, it's hard to keep track of. But if there's just one mutable reference to an object, that's reasonable. But then if we've got a combination of immutable and mutable references, well then, like I said, it's a step too far. So for this reason, it becomes a just an intractable problem. There's probably different solutions to it, but here is an alternative solution. So the alternative solution still uses lifetimes and references and things, is we just make the person class very, very simple. So we'll get rid of this friend option and all of this. Okay, so we're just making people. And because all of this data is simple and owned by the class, we do not have to explicitly specify a lifetime parameter. So that's the simple object. And then we'll have a, a next order of complexity, which is keeping track of the relationships between objects. If you think about a database, you have your underlying objects in one table, then you have another table which tracks like is friends with between two people, if that makes sense. So we'll have another struct called um, friendship. And we'll make that, um, yeah, give that a lifetime scope. And a friendship is a record between two people. Okay. And down here, these methods will be called on um, on friendship objects, friendship records, if that makes sense. So we don't need this. I'll show you why in a second. So we'll take person A, get their name, and then person B, get their name. So we're really, we're using the best of both worlds. In this case, um, we're setting up our references so they are nicely scoped to the lifetime. Remember the problem before, when we create a person, we don't immediately know who they're friends with. But because we've separated this into two orders of complexity, we can create the people first and then we can create the friendship records. And these are referencing people who already exist so that is perfectly fine. Now, yeah, this does not have to be mutable anymore. At the moment, we're not changing state ever. And now we can just go um, make the Alice Bob friendship pact. Okay, there we have it. So then we can just do whatever we want. Okay, so hopefully you can see how this cleans things up. And this is one of those things, the, the code I was working with before, it can get very frustrating when we're trying to do things that Rust is not intending for us to do. This is a case where the system forces us to write cleaner code, I guess. So we can go ahead, run this, and yeah, Alice is friends with Bob. I guess, let me just. Yes, it does. Okay, excellent. Yeah, so that'll be it. And like I said, in the next video in this series, I'm going to go more into the SDL2 um, realm. So yeah, hope to see you there and have fun. Bye.